Hello and welcome to the Climbing Daily Wednesday news show and it's good to be back after the long weekend break. A hiatus. The news this week has been dominated by the death of three climbers who have achieved legendary status within the community. The events took place over the last week, so here is a timeline of what happened. On Tuesday the 16th of April, the three alpinists David Lama, Jess Roskelly and Hans-George Auer set off for an attempted ascent on the east face of House Peak via the M16 route in Alberta, Canada. Jess had told his father, John Roskelly, he would call him that evening to check in. On hearing no word from his son, John then notified Parks Canada on Wednesday morning. Parks Canada immediately took action and after an initial reconnaissance, it was concluded that all three climbers were presumed dead. On Thursday, Friday and Saturday, the conditions were too dangerous to attempt a search on ground. Finally, on Sunday the 21st of April, a visitor safety team along with a specially trained avalanche dog were able to recover the bodies of the three climbers. Since the recovery, on the phone of Jess Roskelly, a summit photo was found of the three alpinists, meaning that the avalanche took place whilst the three were on their descent. All three climbers are very well known within the community and their achievements and accolades have been talked about for years. David Lama has been at the forefront of climbing all his life. He started with bouldering and sport climbing, winning the European Lead Championships at 16, followed by the European Bouldering Championships. He won World Cups, excelling in competition climbing, but also managed to climb 9A on rock, as well as difficult multi-pitches. There was controversy in his career, with his free attempt of the compressor route in Patagonia and the bolts placed by the media and support team getting anger from the Alpine community. He grew and learned from that incident and finished the route in 2012, an achievement that was truly astounding. He began to move towards alpine climbing and establishing new routes in the greater ranges. As with everything he touched in climbing, his dedication and integrity shone throughout. His solo climb of Lunagri, first attempted with Conrad Anker, simply blew everyone's minds. Always humble, David pushed the limits of what was possible in climbing. Hans Jörg Auer was bold, brave and daring, a machine in the alpine environment. At just 23, he soloed the notorious fish route in the Dolomites, only telling his brother of his intentions and not even taking any photos. It remains as one of the greatest solos of all times. He was perfectly at home in the mountains, often climbing alone and fully aware of the risks he took. One of his greatest achievements was an ascent of the unclimbed Kuyang Chish East in Pakistan a 7,000 metre peak that required extreme determination and commitment. Jess Roskelly, 36, had grown up around climbing. His father, John Roskelly, was one of the best alpinists of his generation and in 2014 received the ultimate accolade of the Pule d'Or Lifetime Achievement Award in Alpinism. After becoming the youngest American at the time to summit Everest in 2003 at the age of 20, Jess Roskelly began to make a name for himself in alpinism, with notable first ascents on the south ridge of Mount Huntington, Alaska, as well as establishing new climbs on the Kunduz Valley of northeast Pakistan, both in 2017. With a full-time job as a welder, Jess was a part-time climber, which makes his CV perhaps even more impressive. Now this has been massive news, uh, incredibly sad to hear it. And also the reaction of the community, the climbing community has been incredible. I've had, well, we've all had so many people contacting us, uh, trying to give us news, trying to give us updates, uh, and it's affected everyone. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's been an outpouring on social media. The whole kind of climbing community has kind of shown its grief uh, for these three guys who passed away on, on House Peak. I mean, all of them have been on Climbing Daily, they've been on Epic TV, we've covered their achievements. But perhaps David, uh, we know a little bit more just because of his profile and the fact that we took person, like I've interviewed him, we've seen him at events. I, I, he's the only, still to this day, he's the only climber who I took a selfie with. I was at the Adidas Rockstars backstage and he was just there and he's, he's always been my hero. He's like the man. And um, yeah, I took a selfie with him, which is on one of my phones somewhere. Yeah. Just no, a lovely bloke. It's amazing. No, I, I, for me personally, I think that um, what's so, it, really interesting about this is, is, you know, obviously climbing has changed over the last five years. There's been a lot kind of different kind of aspects to it and a lot these days is kind of in competitions and in bouldering and, and sport climbing, indoor, indoor climbing, but it's it's notable that with an alpinism, which isn't such a high profile part of the sport, we've got to, we've got to admit that there's still this much kind of grief and sadness about, about these three guys, because at the end of the day, these were the guys 
that you know were risking their lives to push the limits of the sport and there is still within alpinism and the great ranges and the bigger mountains so much to push um so yeah i i think it's 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 it really important to kind of tie this in this is still climbing this is like still one big sport that we all we're all kind of part of and you know even if you're kind of bouldering from right at the beginning in climbing walls right to the kind of you know the, the high end kind of uh the alpinism type stuff these guys were doing it's it, it's all tied together and i think that it, it kind of this kind of thing unfortunately that it is does does bring that kind of climbing community together. Yeah, and it really has. I mean, we've seen so much on social media, Instagram, Facebook has been full with it this week, uh, and, and rightly so, because, I mean, these guys truly did some of the, the, the greatest ascents that we've seen. Uh, some of the most amazing videos, like David videos of him soloing uh, the route we're talking about. Hans is, you know when he was abseiling off yeah. the tiny little hook yeah, thing? Little nubbin, oh yeah. my God, it's just like so Terrifying. many memories from those guys. Yeah. So it's, it's looking back on them, remembering them, for what they achieved yeah. uh, and their lives. I, I, for me, I, I think it's quite often you see these Alpine, uh, Alpine climbers and stuff like that. And I think for a lot of people, they're not relatable. Mm -hmm. I think these three guys, I don't know, for me, they made it relatable. Like they were, they were, they were kind of superhuman, but they were human at the same time. Um, and especially like, I think certainly with David and Hans George, they were full-time climbers. So there was more kind of like footage of them um, but to the, to the same extent with Jess, like yeah. st some of the video footages that, that used to come out of them was just, was absolutely mind blowing. Yeah. And he was so underground as well. Like, Cause I, you know, I knew about him from reputation. You start to read into it and you're like, oh my God, he's done that. He's done yeah. this, he's done this. You know, he, he just Doing my Jess. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. huge within the sport. Yeah. And it, it's only when you start really looking into what these guys did that you realize the, the scale of it. It was unbelievable. Yeah, um, yeah. And this is kind of why we thought we'd spend a little bit longer on this today, because it has affected everyone. We thought we'd want to chat about our feelings towards it, your feelings towards it. Um, please leave comments below. Just tell us how you feel, because I think we need to talk about these incidences and just, just get them out and, and share them, because we're all climbers, it's what we do. Yeah. And it's, it's a risk for everyone. So, um, yeah. Uh, we need to move on with what we do at Epic TV and Climbing yeah. Daily. Those guys will never be forgotten. Um, it, it's not the greatest link in the world. We're going to talk about the 8C 9B counter. Um, which has been busy. Which has been very busy. <laughs> So cracking into the 8C slash 9B counter, and I reinstate that I hate the 8C counter. I don't know why you would say that, considering we're in April and it's already it's, out of shot. It's ridiculous. Nine, shot? 9B counter. Come back here. That... 9B counter. Simple, easy to follow, ridiculous. And also, Instagram still isn't helping us. So guys, if you are tagging us, and thank you, as always, for tagging us in posts, you need to, at the moment, tag the athlete's name as well, because for whatever reason, within Instagram, if you tag our names and we click on the post, we can't see it. Don't know why, it's still happening. It's an Instagram bug. Or maybe it they're is. trying to, like, they've heard about the 90 counter and yeah. they don't want us to... Well, they were watching the show the other day. Well, everyone watches the show, right? Yeah, right. Um, let's start with the 90 counter because it's the best. Uh, Philippe? Felipe. Camargo. Felipe. 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 You spelled Camargo. it wrong, but it's fine. Did I spell it wrong? Yeah. Ah. It's F E. Is it? Are you yeah. sure about that? Because I definitely copied it off the internet. Hang on a sec. <laughs> I, I promise you, look. Hang on. Hang on. You're right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. right. So uh, dyslexia strikes again. Uh, he's climbed El Bon Combat 9B, which means he gets one point on the 9B counter, the best counter, the only one that really counts. Okay. Get that thing out of here. Come on, I've you got a list. long piece I've got a of list. loveliness. Christoph Rauch. Okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah, he's one. already on it. He's climbed from dirt, grows the flowers. Uh, Christoph Rauch, that's 80, so it's one point. He's going for uh, uh, numbers he rather is. than, uh, I mean, I'm not gonna say not hard, because 8 is pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> he's got three 8Cs. Uh, Anthony Gulstein, he's new on the list. One of my favorite guys, landed on my wrist, nearly broke me. Yeah. Love him. Uh, he gets one point. Can't okay, remember can't the climb. Can you remember the climb? Uh, 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 yes, come back to me. Okay, uh, right, Raichi, Raichi Murari? Murari, Raichi. Murai. Murai, he gets one point as well. Uh, well done, Raichi, congratulations mate, killing it. Jimmy Webb, um, you know, it's Jimmy Webb, he's of course on the list. He's done two, two, uh, 180C, 180C plus? Uh, wait a minute. Finished climate as he has repeated the big island, an iconic That was, that was, that was, that was, ages, that was 2018. Karen, Karen. Uh, yeah, so um, right, uh, Jimmy Webb. So 18C for sure, so that's one point. It, was the second one an 8C plus? No, 8C. 
No, Dirk from, yeah? Wait, 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 what are you doing? Jimmy <laughs> Webb's got two, isn't he? Yeah, yeah no, no, uh, we did from Dirk Rose of Flowers, and then that's that's the AC+, plus, and then that's the AC. The weird German name? Yep. Okay, just one, are you sure? Yep. Okay, one. And then Matt Fultz, he's new on the list as well. Matt, uh, great name, by the way, Matt. Stunning name. Brilliant. Uh, he's done Paint It Black HC, so he gets a point. Um, have you found his uh, AC? Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me two Not seconds. how you spell Instagram. Uh, Anthony Gossi on Instagram. Just Phil. Here we go, here we go, we've got it, got it, got it. Um, God, what's going on? Uh, Is that it? I quite know. enough. Quite enough? Quite enough. AC, the one that um, Manny Corny claimed the other day. Yes, mate. Is he on the list? Yes. Manny Corny is on the list. <laughs> there we go. Um, also comment below and let me know if you want to ban the AC counter. No. Who's winning? Rai, Rai Hoei Kamiyama is winning. Done. <laughs>So, uh, media on the website, any, uh, anything big We've got up? a new release coming out this Friday, it's not released yet, but there is a teaser uh, floating around of Jim Pope climbing in Norway, the Lake District and all other kind of places. I didn't think I'd get to where I've got to today when I started climbing. So when I was pretty young I wasn't that great at climbing. Like the first competition I entered, I came last. And but that kind of didn't really phase me. I had no expectations. He's come on so far on this trip, the pinnacle of that really, sort of just showing how, how good he really is. It's been pretty inspirational seeing Jim here in the cave, seeing it this last week or so, transferred onto rock, and seeing it in the results that he's had a little bit in competitions, some semi-finals, and also on sighting like up to 8B+. He's definitely <laughs> stepped it up a couple of gears. Where will Jim go in the future? Obviously, I think he's gonna still do competitions and I think that's like, not a major driving force for Jim but I think he enjoys it. He's a, a rock climber through and through. I think he just fully comes alive when he's out on the rocks. So that's out Friday. That's out Friday. It's a new film with Jim Pope by a film, a filmmaker called David Petz. Legend. Legend. True legend. Jim Pope. Um, now, next week is the Arcteryx uh, Big Mountain Weekend in the Lake District. We're going along. We're we've, going got, along. we've got lots of plans for it all. Very lots, very lots of plans. Very lots of plans. Yeah. Many, many, many plans. Uh, we'll be going, we'll be interviewing our, our normal kind of thing. But so feeding quite nicely into Arcteryx, and Arcteryx has been restocked on the Epic TV shop. Uh, my personal favourite is the leggings. Really? Love a female legging. I often feel like I should climb more in female leggings. Have you tried jeggings? I have not. Have you tried jeggings? I've not tried jeggings. I'd imagine a sweaty crop situation would crop up. It with jeggings? Yeah. Depends how sweaty you get generally. Or I mean, Tom Randall's very sweaty and he wears jeggings. Does he? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Tom. Come on, Tom. But uh, yeah, it's, it's updated. There's new t-shirts that we haven't got yet. There's new hats that we haven't got yet. Um, <laughs> right, Tarek, send me some. This is old. There are some badass t-shirts on there. You haven't got anything. I have to wear like unbranded shirts. Terrible, terrible. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's new gear. It's kind of cool. It's Arcteryx, and we love it. And it's pretty good. Uh, what? There's a competition as well with Arcteryx. Go for it. Uh, so basically, you can win a couple of tickets to come to the Arcteryx Alpine Climbing Academy. You have to go to the website that we're going to put in the link below uh, and you could win a trip for two to come and do some clinics and hang, hang out up. with us in Chamonix. So the only thing is, terms and conditions, you got to be from the UK. Yeah, you've also got to buy us a beer if you see us. That's true. It is in the terms and conditions, we don't make up the rules. Yeah. I think that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Apologies about the break for the Easter break, but we were on holiday. Uh, we'll I'm see you sorry. soon. Sorry, You're not sorry. sorry. Not sorry. sorry there we go. Sorry. You've heard it here first, we're not sorry, but we will see you every day as much as humanly possible. Other from than now the weekends. On. Yeah, we're not there. We're on, you know. We're on holidays. <laughs>